I don't go through that many scriptures, but once in a while I do. But you should always try to bring your Bible. That way you kind of know where things are at. Highlight them. I have this old Bible I've had for forever. I think I bought it in 82. I got it all marked up and I know just where it's at. Right on the pages. <laughs> I want to talk about the grace of God, maybe in a way that you've heard it, maybe it's in a way that you haven't heard it. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, grace, let's understand that it's something that's divinely given. It's a talent or a blessing. When any of you have an ability to do just the common things, like you women would sew, and some are really able to do that really good, or some are able to do this or do that, that's a talent. That's grace given to you by God. And God gives each one of us grace to make the body of Christ full. Amen? And we know how the world uses the grace. They don't use it within the parameters of God. But that's what grace is. It's a talent or a blessing, a condition. Or being favored by someone. And I want to, when I read this, I want you to see something about grace. God is a God of grace. Not grace for you to do what you want to do, but grace given to you so you can do what he wants you to do. Amen? Yeah. That's grace. And we know that grace came to us right at first through Christ. And we, we asked for forgiveness of our sins. And if you were like me, you didn't even know what was sin, what wasn't sin. You just don't know. And many times through your walk, you think that there's certain things in your life that it's okay. And one day you find out and God says, I don't want you doing that no more. And you go, really? He says, no, I don't like it when you do that. Well, would you forgive me? God says, yes, I'm going to forgive you. I forgive you. Let's just do it the right way now. And you go, that's grace. The grace of God wasn't that he tapped you on the shoulder for every little thing. He let it go one thing at a time. And then all at once he just said, hey. All right, let me read on. In chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians 7, Paul, he got taken to heaven. And he says, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation that was given unto me, a thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, let me just tell you, Paul was taken to heaven. He got to see many things, things that he wasn't even uh, able to speak of in heaven down here. And he said, so I would not get puffed up with pride. God sent a demon to me. You think, does God do that? Yeah, he does. He sent one to King Saul, but he sent one to Paul. And you would think, oh my golly, why are you allowing Satan to buffet me in this area? And God said, because of my great revelation knowledge that I've given to you about me, so you are a person, you are a man, you are a person, and people get prideful. And he says, I can't have you to be prideful. Amen? Amen. And we know all the scriptures where if we will humble ourselves, God will give us riches and honor. Amen? And if we humble ourselves and fear God, God will... Why do we fear God? Because he's the one that controls everything. Now, in Paul's case, Paul's doing good. God took him to heaven. God showed him all this thing. But God knew with Paul 
Paul, you're going to need something to not keep you down a little bit. That's why God sometimes doesn't straighten everything out in our life right away. Because we, as a people, would become prideful. So God gives us something really good, but then he gives us something over here that levels the playing field out a little bit in us. He says, for this I besought the Lord. Because of this, I sought God three different times, and he says, God, take this thing away from me. Who knows what it was? It could have been a sickness. could have been constant, this, this, or that, or a buffeting of darkness in his life. And it's just like, get this oppression away from me. Get this stuff away from me. And he says, I sought God three times and he wouldn't take it away from me. But what he did say, I give you a way out, Paul. My grace for the moment is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for thee. For by strength, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. What does that mean? That means when Paul was really weak, he had to reach up to God and said, for today, God, give me strength. Give me healing. Today, push this thing back a little bit. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in the power of Christ that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure. Get a load of this. I take pleasure in infirmities. Why did he say? Because God's grace is always going to be there for me. An infirmity is a sickness, an illness, something that's buffeting you, something that's not right in your life. I would say it's most likely a sickness here. What well, Paul, he healed people, yes. He healed people, but he suffered under sickness too. Amen? He suffered under the trials. Only God could take that away. Only God can take certain things away. Only God can get Ted up out of that chair and walk. Only God can deliver a person of this drug or that drug. Only God can do that. And what do you call that? That's the grace of God. That's what we're under right now. We need the grace. That grace needs to be prayed down. Our Father who art in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, God, release your grace and make on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a little bit of heaven. Have you ever thought that? God, I just need a little bit of heaven right now in my life. Right here today, right now, I need it. I need you, God. Because I got bad news coming from every direction. Could I have a bit of grace? God says, yes. I will not hold that. And that grace will be sufficient for you today. That's what we, that's what we need. Therefore, I take pleasures and infirmities and reproaches and necessities and what I need some. I need it so bad, God. Paul says, I take pleasure in that because I know it's coming. I know the grace is going to come. When I need a job and there, everybody is turning me down, I know there's coming a day Amen. that grace will be sufficient. That's faith in the grace. That's faith in the kindness of God. That's faith in a blessing from the Lord. You never know when God's going to bless you. You can go into prayer, and all at once, things just change because you went into prayer. And it gets you to want to go into prayer a lot. So then you'll go into prayer the next day right away, and you go, what's new? What's new, God? I want something brand new. And God says, ah, in about 10 days, I'll give you something new. But he don't tell you that. He says, you just come back to me tomorrow. He wants it to become a way of life for you. So you're having a hard time with something, and so do you decide, I'm going to go ahead and fast. I'm going to fast and pray. Amen? Right? I'm going to fast and pray. So I'm going to fast my breakfast. I'm going to fast lunch. I'm not going to eat till the night. I am pressing you, God. For grace to come into my life. I'm pressing you, God, for a favor from you. So the first person fasts and they pray. And they're still waiting. They fast and pray. And they got a week goes by. Two weeks goes by. Three months goes by. They're still fasting and praying. They still hold their integrity. And all at once, it comes in. And God said, if you would never have fasted, I couldn't have done this. But, but because you fasted and prayed, you moved this mountain. Or I moved the mountain. We give God credit. His grace came and moved the mountain. Therefore, you say, 
I take pleasure in things not going right in my life because I know that I can petition the Lord, I can go to God, and grace will eventually come, and I will have a praise report come Sunday morning. How come everybody's got the praise reports and I don't? Well, you'll get one. You just got to fast and pray. Amen? And so many times, grace just comes to you and you go, I didn't even pray for that. I didn't even pray for that. I didn't even expect that. And God says, I wanted to bless you. I just wanted to bless you. In reproaches, necessities, persecutions, and distresses for Christ's sake. Can you imagine? Things happen in your life and it is truly a miracle. And you go to your church or you go to a different place people and you say hey God did this and they all just kind of looked at you they just look at you kind of strange well yeah what are you talking about God don't move like that well he did for me for when I am weak then am I strong why because when you lose hope and all you can hope on is the kindness of God that's grace that's what grace is it's just the very kindness of of the Lord. Then, when I'm in that place, when I can't make it happen, God says, you have no idea how strong you really are right now. Because now, you can't get the credit. Isn't that why God says, I pick the weak things of the world? I pick, I pick the things that people look down on, and those are the people I raise up. That no flesh would glory in my presence. Hallelujah. Yeah. That no flesh would glory in my presence. And all that is is just saying, God, I can't do it, but you got to. But I'll, I'll open every door, but behind one of those doors... There has to be the provision. So you keep turning the rocks over. All the leads you could have, you turn them over, turn them over, but your hope is in God. His grace is all you need. But you still got to go out and beat the bushes. You still got to pray. You still got to get in the battle. You still got to have what in the game? Skin in the game. Amen. Praise the Lord. I used to play basketball, and I remember when you used to just slide on those wooden floors. It's just like, oh, that was a bad one. <laughs> yeah. That's having skin in the game, amen? First Corinthians, uh, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Now, this God that we talk about, he is able to make all grace abound towards you. I want you to underline that in your Bible. All grace abound towards you. He's able to take his grace, whatever it takes, all the grace you need, and he's able to make that thing happen. You think about today, what do I need to happen in my life? Well, I need my child to be healed. I need this. I need, I need that. I need to be closer to you, God. I'm just, I just feel like I need to get in the driver's seat. And just, if I could drive to heaven, I'd drive to heaven and say, Hey, God, what are you doing in my life? And God says, I'm able to show you that. I'm able to take you to that place you want to go. God is able to make every type of grace that you need, that one another needs around you, to abound, to happen, is what he means. That ye always, having all sufficiency in all things. I want you to underline the all things, amen? All sufficiency. That, you say, well, I haven't got more than I need, but I do have enough. You might have you might have saved up some money and you got you got a nest egg there and then God just takes and he takes your job away from you and he says I want you to 
Just believe in me that I'm going to get you a, a different place to work or whatever. He said, well, I don't want to lose my nest today. He says, you are sufficient with what you have. How much can you take with you in the casket? I can't take a thing. But I could leave my kids something. He said, don't you worry about that. I'm able to make that happen in your life. Amen? That was the thing that I, I pondered on through the years. Will I give my kids anything? Or will they have to buy me my suit to bury me? And I said, Lord, don't let that happen like that. I want to be able to give my kids an inheritance. Amen? You know what it's like when you just get a little bit of something extra? You don't like it that mom and dad died, but you're sure glad they did? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> It sweetens, it sweetens the deal up. Dad never did tell you. <laughs> but he got, he got a little money for you. Really? <laughs> and all of a sudden those tears start drying up. <laughs> God is able to make all grace abound. And I've seen that with God. I've seen when you go through a hard time, God does something over here to, ha to raise you up, to help you. In 2 Timothy 1.9, it says, God has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our work or anything we have done. See, there's a call in your life. This is grace to the body of Christ. God has given each one of you something that you can bless the body of Christ with. One here is... The, gets a word and say, you know, I was, I was praying and I, I felt like the Lord said this. Or you're in church and all at once it comes on you and say, I need to tell so-and-so, God's got a job for you. And this thing's coming soon. And I can just tell you, it's alive in me. It's real. It's, I know it's from heaven. I believe it's from heaven. That is a gift that the body of Christ needs. Or the body of Christ says, listen, I know that you don't have it. Here's some money. Amen. That happened this week. People come and help you out. And you go, oh, I hate that. God said, don't hate it. I bless them so they can bless you. That's grace given to you. But it's not anything you've done, but according to his own purpose. God has a purpose. And it's just more than what we can imagine. Well, that reminds me of a verse. Eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has, has re prepared for them that love him. Your eye hasn't seen, it hasn't entered into your heart or your ear the things that God has for you. You have not a clue where you're heading. God keeps those things secret, and all once that door is open, you go, I never thought this would ever happen like this. God knew that from the beginning of time. See, that's the grace of God. Not anything that you have done, but how he came and he pulled you up out. And he set you. He set you in a place where you can glorify him and help other people. Amen? You can encourage them. Who knows where you might end up? Amen? It's according to his purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ. And it says here, 2 Timothy 1, 9, before the world began. Well, God couldn't have known that. He had it all planned. He had it all planned you were going to be here today. It's impossible. I could have said no, but you didn't. Does he know everything? He knows everything. And all things are possible with him. That's why you should lift things up in the future. I've said this a lot of times, and I, I truly believe it. God, don't let me die full of cancer on my bed. Don't let that happen. Let me go out with a blaze of glory. Amen. God says, well, I, I can do either. Which, which do you want? How do you want it? How do you want it to go down? 
And God says, you can talk to me about it. Let's reason together. I saw my dad go out like that. I don't want to go out like that. Amen? You shouldn't want to go out like that. Say, I want, the day I go home, I, I want to be ministering wherever that's at. I want to be praying for people. I want healing to go forth. And all at once said, wow. I just feel like I need to go sit down. That's it. Why not? All things are possible with Christ. Do you ever think about that? I wonder how I'll go out. I thought about it as a young man. I wonder who I'll marry anyway. <laughs> All young guys think about that, right? And then as you get older, I wonder who I'll marry again. <laughs> 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 oh, Lord, help me, God. I am so weak. <laughs> they look googly-eyed at me, and I just, oh, that's the one. <laughs> His grace gives strength. But those who hope in the Lord... He will renew their strength. It's Isaiah 40, 31. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. They will just keep on, keep on, keep on. Say, I thought you would have gave that Jesus thing up a long time ago. Say, I'm never giving it up. It's the only way. There's nothing to go back to. Amen. I mean, really? We have found out there is no life in a tavern. Amen? We found out there is no life in a drug. You can get drugs from the doctor. Oh, this is legal. Yeah, it's killing you. Do you want to keep taking it? You want to keep taking it? Christ came to set us free. Amen. And you are free indeed. It says here in Titus 2, 11 and 12, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. The grace of God has appeared to all men. There's some, God gives a lot of grace to and says, Listen, I put you in a situation. I had somebody come over to your house and said, Please, Come to church with me. Please come to church with me. And you just pondered on that. Oh, I don't know. I can do it on TV. I can do it here. I can do it there. I got Me and my God, we got something worked out. I just go off to the old stump and I just pray. <laughs> Say, but mom, it's not working anymore. In fact, I don't think it ever worked. Well, and God says, my grace, put that person in front of you and say, come. Come to the house of God. And now you say, I was glad when they say, let us go up to the house of God. It says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Some people get a little lecture. God said, I'll have mercy on whom I will. Compassion on whom I will. Why did you have to have a difficult time? There's a lot of people out there that's still hoping in their money, hoping in this, and hoping that they'll come back as a different person. I'm coming back. You ain't coming back. Oh, yes, I am. I'm coming back, and I want to come back as a dog. Well, you're halfway there. All right. <laughs> Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, this is the grace of God, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in, the pre in this present world. It's teaching us that, to, that denying, this grace is teaching us, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now, in Acts 6-8, it says, Now Stephen, he was a man of 
God, just like any of you, could be like Brian when we talk about you after you're gone. Now, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Can a person, can you be full of grace and power? Yes. Now, it isn't you, but there's people that are just called to be in that place. Like some people are called to be um, a nurse. Some people are called to be doctors. Uh, some people want to be a doctor, and you don't want them to be a doctor. You go, you, I'm never coming to you. But there's people that are called to be that. Some people are, you know, there's mothers and then there's mothers over their children. Some, they just got it. And they're called to show others how to be a good mother. Amen? There is those that just have that grace on the inside of them. But Stephen was one of those men that when he came to Christ, God says, I got mighty things for you to do. I believe we all have mighty things. We, are we all the same? No. One heals, one casts out devils. One preaches the good news, preaches and teaches people. And another one, yes, they'll pray for people and they'll get healed. Is it not all grace of God? But knowing your place, you know what the foundation of your life is? One of your foundations, you come to Christ. He is Lord, right? We know that. But what foundation do you build upon? What foundation do you build upon? That that you're called to do for God. That's what you build upon. Amen? Yes, you build godliness and all this other stuff. But the, the thing that you're called to do, you build on that. If you're called to play music, you write songs. You have this song, you have another song, you have a third song, you got a hundredth song. You build on that foundation. You can pull from that foundation great things from the Lord. That was your call. Amen? Don't ever believe that you're not, call, that you're, you're not called. That you're, well, God will never do much for me. He'll never do much for through me. That's really not true. His grace is lovely. And whatever grace he puts in you is lovely. Now, I'm going to read something that St. Peter said in 1 Peter 4.10. As every man has received the gift, Everybody's gifts are a little bit different. Like you're all a little bit different. You don't, there, you know, you can get two people that look a lot alike, but they're, but they're not. Amen. They're almost there. But all of us look really different from one another. Amen. That's your gift. What's kind of tough sometimes is, is for you to look at somebody and say, I want that gift. And say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What gift are you called to have? That's where the prophetic word comes in. A word from God to you, maybe, or from the pastor. Who's supposed to lead who into green pastures? Well, Jesus is. Well, that's true. But isn't it the pastor that's supposed to be able to see something in the people and say, listen, this is what I really feel. Have you ever considered this? One's a teacher. You raising children, you can see a star in one of your children in a certain area. Everybody has a star. It's, but the parents are the ones that see that. That see that and say, you need to really, you know, you're, you're okay over here, but you really need to focus on that. I'm just telling you, boy. You are a genius when it comes to this. But dad, I want to be a mechanic. No, you can't. You, 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 don't, you, you, you can change a tire. But remember how it fell on you last week? Yeah, I know. It's just, you don't do good. <laughs> but you're really good at this other thing. 
But every man has received the gift, even so minister. Now, this is it. He said, the gift that you got, minister one to another. As good stewards, you're a steward of God. Of the manifold, what's this? Grace of God that gave you that gift, you're to give it out. So that's why when it's not wrong for you to come up and say, hey, pastor, I know everybody's leaving, but would you pray with me? And maybe this time, next time, or whatever time, you get an inkling of maybe what my call is, or I could run some things by you and say, I, I just really have a desire to teach, and I got some things there. And you know what I would say to that? I would say, why don't you come on a Wednesday night? We'll give you 10 minutes. And we'll see if you got that gift. Okay. You've been coming here long enough. You know where we're coming from, where we're going. Okay. All right, I'll do that. See, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Hey, I think I can play a tambourine. Well, we'll know real quick. Here. <laughs> uh, maybe one day in heaven. All right. <laughs> Hey, you'd be surprised. A lot of people, they, they got it down. And that's what makes a, a church. It's all different kinds of so, types of songs. All right, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak by the mouth of God. Let him speak as the oracles of God, stuff that's coming from God. If any man, well, how can anybody do that? Well, it just said here. It just says you can you can have that impression and speak it. That's how God speaks today. If any man speak, let him speak up uh, as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So that part right there is the grace of God. It says in Ephesians 4, 1, but every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Christ gives each one of you. You know what? I, I want you to see this, a gift to you. Sometimes we think an apostle, he has that, he has that option, whether he wants to be or he don't want to be. Mm -mm. No, it don't work like that. If you've been called to be an apostle, if you've been called to say, I don't know if I, I agree with the apostle. All right, all right, let's, let's lower the bar. Uh, let's go right down to a pastor. If you've been called to be a pastor and God wants you to lead people and you go, nope, nope, ain't doing it. I'm going to take up collection. <laughs> nope, ain't going to do it. You're not in good standing with the Lord. Now, you can take up collection like nobody else's business. Amen? You can just... <laughs> God says, would you quit doing that? I got something I want you to do. And it really is not taking up collection. Now, we know this. We know this scripture. You know what I believe? I believe there's some people, you can say they were called, they weren't called, but I believe by the grace of God we are called. For by grace are you saved through faith that no one, nothing of yourself, it is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. What do you have to do? You have to work that thing out a little bit, don't you? I mean, you're robbing banks, right? <laughs> and you, stay, you think it's still good to rob banks. Hey, they got a lot of money there. I've seen it. I've opened up the vault. They're not even using it. It's all stacked up right there. <laughs> and I think we need to spread the cheer around a little bit. And, but you come to Jesus and you, Jesus, and, but God hasn't shown you that robbing banks is wrong. 
Well, you know it's wrong. Everybody says it's wrong. I guess what I'm trying to say is there's some things that you're going to have to get right, amen, before you walk through those pearly gates. Amen. Well, I thought if I was, now it's called repentance too. To get that grace to really work, you got to say, I'm really sorry. Now, I did get born again. I believe I would go to heaven, but I didn't know some things I was doing was wrong. And I go, God, I, 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 just, I just don't know what's right or wrong. He showed me. This is where the grace of God really comes in. I, I believe this. If God is going to take me, he's going to make me... Um, I, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, unaccusable. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna make me... That, I go, I didn't know. I had no idea. But Jesus is my Lord. He's my Savior. And I, I did everything you wanted me to do, God. But I had no idea this was... This would really get me in Dutch over here, you know? I, I had no idea. And God says, yeah. And, and if the Lord takes you home, I believe he's so kind that he's going to show you. He said, listen, I, I can't bring you up here unless you straighten this thing out. You're beating your wife up. Well, I know, I got my, I got my, no, I shouldn't even say it. You're just being, you're just being not nice to her. And I want you to stop it. Amen. I want you to stop it. And I want you to get that thing right because I am going to bring you home. But you got, you got to, you, your words got to be very, very kind. You're beating, your, beating her up with your words. In 2, uh, 2 Peter 1, 2, it says, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. Grace is something that it is not deserved. Let me back that up a little bit to you. There was a king that said this. I want you to think about this. The prophet came in, used it many times, but it's something really good to use. He says, uh, get your house in order. You're checking out. And the prophet turned around. The guy turned to the wall and said, Lord, I've always done what you wanted me to do. Whenever you wanted something done, I did it. I did it. I made sure it was done just right. God heard that man's cry. I want you to see this. When people say grace, grace is never deserved, I really have to back that up. If you're a person that's always been there for the Lord, do you not think that you have a strong voice in the ear of God? You do. And so God spoke to the prophet as he was leaving town, and he says, I want you to go back and tell the king that I heard him plead his case. I heard him. He says, I give him 15 more years. Oh, he says, Lord... How will I know that this is true, the king said. He says, the sun will go back 10 degrees. Nobody turns the sun back. That's grace too. Who does that? And they already have that. They run the computer system and they know, hey, this thing is off a little bit. We've missed a day over here and the, the sun is dialed back. There's a reason for that. You'll find it in the word of God. Somebody always did what was right in the eyes of God. And when it was time, and God says, you're coming home. But he says, Lord, please. And he says, okay. He said, okay. The good deed of the king gave him grace. Amen. Amen. You can actually build up treasure in heaven. And I believe some of that treasure that's in heaven, Jesus says, he said, you can go and you can say, God, I've always been there for you. I've always done this. Or God, you know I'm all in. But I really need your help now. I've prayed healing for so many people and I brought so many people to Jesus. This is, I'll say this is through your years and maybe each one of you could say that now. 
But God, I need your help right now. I really need, and if you'd be so kind, I can't make you help me, but I need you to. Do you, do we think here today that we cannot reason with God? No, you can. And I, 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 we had a, a person give a testimony months ago. They're walking down the hallway in their house and their knee is just killing them. This is what this person said. God, I don't deserve for you to touch me at all. But I would ask you, would you please do it? This woman said instantly, the throbbing left. Is God not able to change things? He is. So I end with this scripture here. In Hebrews 4, 6, 16, 4, 16, let us therefore approach God's throne, a throne of grace. Let us come boldly before him. Amen. Let me go there and let me just, I only wrote part of it down. Let us go to the throne of God with boldness. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of what? Grace. Boldly. You're washed in the blood of Jesus. You have a right to go to the throne of God for yourself and for other people. And don't have to worry. He said, but what if I ask God for too many good things? He always answers prayer. Sometimes it's no. Amen? That's all right. But it's good that you're ever before him. Let us go, therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 